Hey everybody, this is Scott from Texas Prepper Projects and welcome back to 52 Weeks of Prepping. And today we have a special guest. We have Prepper Wife Stephanie. Hi. So my camera woman from the sand battery video, if you watched it, which you should, because it was really fun. Uh, and today we're going to talk about what it's like to be married to a prepper. And obviously we had some shared experiences with Texas Blizzard. Uh, and had a really good conversation about what her perspective was on how we did, prepper stuff that we had, stuff that we bought afterwards. So it was really neat to hear her perspective as sort of a victim of the blizzard, but a recipient of my preparedness, if that's a term. I'm just going to go with it. <laughs> so uh, we're just going to have a chat and talk about prepping stuff from kind of an outsider's perspective. Awesome. Hi, prepper wife. Hi, babe. Hey. <laughs> so before you met me, what did you know about prepping? Um, definitely not as much as I do now. <laughs> um, but I have always had like a little go bag, at least with like, you know, important documents ready to go if I ever needed to like get out of my place really quickly. With, Which like, I don't even have. <laughs> Ooh, that's one thing that I did that you haven't done. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. You can learn from me though. It's okay. okay. Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, but it's got like my social security card. If I had any kind of like car title that would be in there, like my student ID, just anything that would have been a big hassle to replace that wasn't already in my purse. Mm -hmm. And what did you think about uh, when you learned about me and, and being a prepper? Um, I loved it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think I've told you before that, you know, there's this part of my lizard brain that feels very protected and cared for um, because that is something that is so important to you. And you're always thinking about, you know, like, how can I help my family, our family being like me and our two cats, um, but how can I, you know, keep them safe and keep them happy if stuff was ever to go down? Mm -hmm. So just, I really like it. It feels helps you feel more secure. It does. It, yeah. it really does. And um, I always know that if something does happen, that you have, you know, thought about it six ways and <laughs> <laughs> that you have, you know, a plan and Probably. It, it is really nice. And also like all the things that I've ever been like, oh, I should really like get a water storage container. You know, all the things that I've been like, I should really do that. Like you, you do it. It's already so done. It's nice. Yeah. <laughs> What is, I guess the answer is that, but what is the best thing about being married to a prepper? Um, I think the best thing about being married to a prepper, like I said, is that, you know, there's someone who is thinking about you in an emergency, um, who already has a plan, who already has supplies, um, that, you know, you take these things seriously and you don't just kind of like brush them off and you're like, you know, whatever. Uh, so it, it feels like we're going to make it through no matter what kind of curveballs we get thrown at us, which we have had a mm, few. A couple here and there. <laughs> yeah. Do you think that, and, and I'm going to jump ahead, do you think that the things that I am preparing for are rational and logical? Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, What's coming to mind for me right now is when I was in college, I went, uh, this guy was having a get together and he gave like a 30 minute mini presentation about like his plan for a zombie apocalypse complete with like a map and stuff. And, um, it was very impressive, but you know, hasn't happened. Um, and you are much more practical. I mean, like zombie apocalypses are fun and I know that you like zombies, but uh, the things that you are preparing for and taking really seriously are things that can happen and have happened mm -hmm. and that we have already benefited. Yeah. yeah, we've already benefited from your thinking ahead and planning ahead and making sure that we're going to be provided for. Which is funny that you mentioned <laughs> that and mentioned zombies because in the last video, I, you know, my question was, what are you preparing for? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I always try to be logical and practical about those things. You know, I don't care about CMEs and EMPs and it's fun to talk about zombies. Don't really care. Um, you just buy guns. Um, and I, I will say that the things that you prepare for, just to add on to your last question, 
are things like, you know, are we going to, if we have a boil water notice, like if the water is all of a sudden we can't drink it. Or, Which has happened twice. Yes. Um, or like if the power goes out and it's summer or it's winter and, you know, how does that affect us logistically? Or if, you know. Um, Which has get, happened a half a dozen times. Mm. <laughs> um, or if like, you know, one of us is in the car and the car breaks down in a weird area or if it's winter. Um, so these are some of the things that really could happen and, and some of them have happened that you like to prepare for. That are logical, practical, everyday things mm -hmm. that have happened. Mm -hmm. Winter blizzard has happened at our old house in Pflugerville. Power went out every time it rained. Did happen. Middle of summer, middle of the winter. Power went out. Oil water order has happened twice that I can recall. We had one when we were living downtown and there was the turbidity from the storms. Mm -hmm. And then there was another one. And then during the winter blizzard, we had oil water order. So all these things mm -hmm. have happened. Um, so uh, what's the worst thing about being married to a crap? Um, maybe that like, Every week or two, you'll be like, so I want to get this like big ticket item. And <laughs> I think maybe just like, which you don't do very often, mm -hmm. but you know, um, you don't go after like, like I want to build an underground bunker yeah. or anything. Even if we lived in a house like that we own because we're renting, I still wouldn't build a bunker mm -hmm. unless we lived in a part of Texas that got tornadoes like my my father lives in texarkana and they actually just got hit by a tornado a couple weeks ago so we had a conversation about tornado shelter I, I, I still i'm not an, an end of the world apocalypse kind of guy yeah tornado alleys is different so i'll give some fudge factor there but i still wouldn't build a bunk you know yeah <laughs> anyway i think i think your main thing is that you're always trying to buy me another gun it's happening. I, I don't. I don't want or need another gun. It's gonna happen. We don't need more guns than we have people in the house. The it's cats. Gonna... The cats don't know how to shoot. <laughs> Not yet. Oh <laughs> George will learn. Oh my god. You don't want to put a gun in his hands. <laughs> <laughs> you got to work on the opposable thumbs. <laughs> now, when I asked you this question to prep for this, you gave a different answer about the worst thing about being married to a prepper is. Oh, what did I say? You said that I'm always nagging you about eating the canned food before it expires. Yes, that too. He doesn't like to eat. He'll be like, let's get all this canned food. And then we get all this canned food and then it comes up to expiration date and he doesn't want to eat it. So like I'm eating canned soup for like weeks. <laughs> to be fair, the canned soup is for you. The canned chili is for me. All the various soups we bought for you after the blizzard. So you should be eating them. Well, you ate the soup too during the blizzard. I mean, yeah, I'd eat it if I had to. Mm -hmm. So There's some like beef and potato soup in there. there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, there's some beef stew in there. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so on, while well, we're kind of on this thread, it... it Speaking to all the other spouses out there who are preppers and may have issues getting their partners on board, what advice would you give? I mean, you've been pretty lenient with me with the prepping and the supportive, mm -hmm. supportive of it, um, of what I do when I'm buying. Um, you know, you're not out at the gun range with me, but you don't give me crap about it. So, I mean, you've been really good about. My uh, prepper endeavors. Well, I go to the gun range with you. When we go to to your dad's place, you have been shooting with me. We shoot and, maybe like a couple times a year together. And to be absolutely fair, prepper wife got her ham radio license. She did. We'll talk about this in another video. But she sure did went of her own accord and got her tech license. So she is a legit ham radio operator. Um, we have a simplex channel and, you know, she's at, she started to study for her general for HF stuff. Um, kind of that dropped off and that's okay. But we have, you know, honest, legit technical conversations about ham radio. She's asked really good stuff. I've been really, really happy and really impressed. We actually did some ham radio testing today while I was out driving around. I got a tower in the backyard that we played around with. So Prepper wife got her ham ticket. Yeah. Look at that. And to be fair, I decided not to go after my general after I got my tech license because 
anytime that you and I are doing HF, you're with me. Yeah. And so I don't really need You it. could write off my call sign. Yeah. yeah. And that's a good point. So the tech license is if we're, if we're separated, mm -hmm. we can hit each other. But if we're, uh, if we're doing HF, she's going to be with me and she can just use my ticket anyway. So, mm -hmm. um, but she didn't just memorize the questions like a lot of people do. She actually learned the material and asked me really good follow-up questions afterwards, which actually was a ton of fun. She would listen to the book, uh, the training book on audio, audio book, and then come talk to me afterwards if she didn't understand something. So it led to the, some really fun, engaging conversation. So yeah, and that's, that's when you knew you wanted to marry me. That was before we got married. So yeah. Yeah. Ladies, if you're wanting to nail down your prepper boyfriend, just get your tech. we will <laughs> 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 buy you a ring the next week. <laughs> It was not that far after that, actually. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was far after that. Mm -hmm. We don't need to get into that. <laughs> mm -hmm. So how, so how do we get your spouse uh, involved? How, how, what would you tell preppers out there to, how to get their spouses involved? Um, if you're a prepper guy and you're trying to get, um, you know, the stereotypical thing I think I think of is like a prepper guy who's trying to get their wife or their girlfriend on board who are kind of like, well, like, we don't need all this stuff. Like, um, is that kind of what you're thinking? Yeah. Um, I, I would say that starting with things that are really practical and could happen or even better yet already have happened that were like super inconvenient or like even, you know, just like a hard thing to go through. Um, like say you got a boil water notice and all of a sudden like one of y'all is having to rush out to the grocery store and grab a bunch of bottled water and that's expensive and now more so than ever. And then you get there and there's no bottled water. So now we're boiling water on the stove and that's a huge hassle. And how long do we even boil this for? Like mm -hmm. all of this could have been circumvented if you had had like water storage, which is what we do. Um, it's really nice. Anytime that that's happened, we just get out the water storage thing and set it up on the counter and we're good uh, to go. Yeah, not a big deal. So I would start with things that could also be important to her that she could see like how it could be beneficial for everyone concerned. And I think it also is nice because it shows that you're thinking about her and you're thinking about things that she would want to see or have happened differently in those kinds of situations. So yeah, I think starting from just a really practical standpoint. No before, zombies. Yeah, before you ask her if you can get a $500 katana for the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> Warmer up a little bit. <laughs> Let's start it off slow. Start with some a twenty dollar aquatana for some some jugs of water before you get into the katana yes. or assault <laughs> rifles or something like that. Baby steps. Baby steps. <laughs> I will. Ma I do own guns. We'll talk about them at some point. But I made the joke on Reddit that my AR fifteen and my ten thousand rounds did not do me a lot of good during the blizzard. I, I couldn't shoot the storm, nope. you know, that, that $20 Aquatainer was a lot more important than that AR-15 was. Can't eat bullets. Can't eat bullet, bullets. Well, you can, they're just not real tasty, a little, a little crunchy. <laughs> so focus on practical things. What about the other way? What if you are a female trying to get a male involved? Prepper female oh. trying to get the husband in. And, and he just says, oh, I've got guns. I don't need to be ready for anything. Oh. <laughs> um, well, I think that, again, finding some kind of shared ground around, like, you know, yeah, like, I, you know, I'm worried about this kind of eventuality, too. Like, in addition to having a bunch of ammunition, wouldn't it be cool if we had some canned food? You know, like, um, like if, I don't know, they're, they're worried about, like an apocalypse or something, you know, we don't want to go try to raid a supermarket along with every other person in the neighborhood. Yeah. Um, so, and it could be nice because they could enjoy that. Like they're both kind of thinking in that way. Mm -hmm. um, and that you just kind of take two different stances yeah. towards it. You know, uh, something that I have heard, <clears throat> which I think is a good kind of segue into that is camping. If you're a camper, you probably have 85, 90% of the typical prepper stuff that you need, you know, camp stoves, water jugs, tents and blankets and flashlights. You, you, you probably well on your way there. So if you're trying to get somebody into prepping say, well, let, let's go, let, let's go camping. 
Well, I want, I want to try camping. Don't we need to get a bunch of stuff before we go camping? Like the one time we went camping, I spent like $300 on crap mm -hmm. and then sold it because we hated camping. <laughs> but there's all this <laughs> gear that I needed for this one overnight camping trip that we went on. But, you know, so you got camp that like our friends Ben and Danielle are big campers. And so during the freeze, they just mm -hmm. camped in their garage with their headlamps and their flashlights and their camping stove and all their camping cook gear. And, and they were, you know, in fairly good shape because they kind of had all that stuff. So maybe think about asking your partner if they want to go camping and that gives you an excuse to go buy toys. So let's shift gears. We had a really good talk about the blizzard from your experience. Mm. So why don't you just give me the high level of, of what your experience was with the blizzard, then we'll get into a little bit more specifics. Yeah, so <clears throat> just to catch everyone up, uh, you and I were without power for four days mm -hmm. um, for like 100 hours, I think, was the total. And um, like didn't have internet, the roads were frozen over, were icy, so it wasn't safe to drive. Um, even though we got some offers to like, you know, come and join up with some people, we didn't feel comfortable driving. Um, it was also like, there was no COVID vaccine out at that point. Mm -hmm. um, and it got down to 45 degrees in the house mm -hmm. by the time that everything was said and done. Yep. So it was, it was very cold. We did have a gas fireplace. But you and I learned very quickly that gas fireplaces are for show. Yep. Um, they do not throw out a lot of heat they at all. They do not radiate heat. We had like our like muffin tins and like baking pans. Like, like cast all, iron skillet. Yeah. On like, top of the fireplace <laughs> trying to heat them up to yeah. try to push heat out. It did not work. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And uh, we also had our two cats at the time. So going anywhere would have, you know, we would have had to take them with us too. So. Yeah. We were all just very cold <laughs> together for yep, those very snuggly. Days. Yes. Um, oh, and all of our food went bad too. Yep. We we tried to put it out in the sun or in, sorry, in, the, in the snow. In the snow, but it was in the sun. Yeah, there was just enough sunlight to get it hot enough to melt everything, yep. and so everything was bad yep. by the time that we tried to eat it. So we were canned food only the whole time. Yep. We did have macaroni and cheese though. Because mm. we had the stove top, so we got macaroni Sorry, and cheese. Yeah. So the one the upside, stove. we have a gas stove, mm -hmm. and your oven doesn't work without power, but the stove top does. You just light it manually with a lighter, and so we had we could cook inside on the stove top. Now I do have a barbecue grill that was outside, but we didn't have to mess with that. So we got to have Velveeta a couple of times. Mm -hmm. Yes, which is great for morale. Yes, <laughs> we learned about morale food. So from a prepper perspective. I mean, we, we have several friends who live in town who kind of went through this also. So how do you feel sort of how we did from a prepper mm -hmm. perspective in the grand scheme of things? I thought we did really great. Um, you know, we had a really nice battery pack, like big, not like one of those portable ones, but like a big battery pack that was on a cart. <laughs> um, so you and I could just charge our phones off of that. You know, we try not to use them too much, but over a four day period, you got to charge them a couple of times. Whereas we saw our neighbors like sitting in their cars with their engines running, charging their phones. Charging their phones. Like they weren't going anywhere. They were charging their phones. So that was, that was my first generation battery pack. And that was a hundred amp hour SLA, basically like a trolling motor battery on a welding cart from Harbor Freight with a couple of USB ports on it. And we used that when my little USB uh, lithium packs ran out. So I had this trolling motor forklift battery on a cart with some ports on it. And that's what we used. And also she is correct. We, we did have our neighbors um, sitting in their car, idling their cars to charge their phones. So when we thawed out, I bought a couple of USB battery packs on Amazon and gave them to the neighbors. That was very sweet of you. Make friends with your neighbors for yeah. 20 bucks. Okay. Um, I also really liked the rope light that we had. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it gets dark early in the winter and uh you know, it's like, do we like run, like, do we light candles? Like over four days, your candles are going to run low and having the rope light doesn't draw a whole lot of power and it lit the whole hallway and our bedroom. Um, you know, 
just enough light. It's not like you have like a huge spotlight that's like glaring down on you. It's like the running lights in a movie theater. Like mm -hmm. you can get up and down the stairs. You can walk around yep. without killing yourself without having to hold something in your hands. Yes. Yep. So that was really nice to have. Um, and then of course, like our soup, like our cans of soup that we had um, and getting into like morale food. I don't know if you want to talk about that that's, now yeah, or later. Do it. Um, we definitely learned the value of keeping morale up. Yep. So, um, I ate a lot of fun size Snicker bars that week. Like a, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of lot. Snickers. Um, Snickers really kept me going yep. that week. <laughs> and they've got good energy. They got protein and sugar and stuff like that. So that's yes. good. Yes. And we are not sponsored by Snickers, although that would be nice yep. if we were Snickers. Yep. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, um, having that was really good. Um, like when you think about prepping, like a lot of times you're just like, you know, like something perishable, like it doesn't matter, you know, like the MREs, whatever, it doesn't matter if it tastes good, just as long as it lasts and it's filling, that's not all there is. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like you'll live, but you won't be happy to be alive. <laughs> you that, won't be happy. That was a little dark. That's a little dark. <laughs> you'll be, you'll live, but you won't be, ha you won't be thriving. Yeah. You'll be surviving, but not thriving. You won't be happy about it. Yeah. I mean, like four days with no TV, no internet, trying to use your phone super sparingly. Um, you know, we, I, we just like wore all of our clothes that we had. So like, I don't remember what you did, but I would like take a shower and just put back on all my clothes because I was wearing all my warmest stuff. Yeah. Um, so you feel grungy and gross and kind of miserable by the end of the whole thing. Yeah. So anything that can keep morale high was really nice. Um, so also like card games, you and I played a lot of card games. We read some books, um, just trying to like pass the time yeah. until the power would come back on. Yep. That's, we learned about having, you know, no electricity required entertainment. People talk about that online, but you don't really realize what mm -hmm. it, what it's like it's until you're there. Deal. So um, playing card games, reading like actual paper books, imagine that. Um, you know, I have a Kindle now and, and a, or an Amazon Fire tablet and I'm loading books on it and stuff like that because mm -hmm. they're pretty low power consumption. So what were some things that you <laughs> wished that we would have had other um, than electricity? Yeah. And I would say too, with the books, like don't like, like have like classics on hand to read, like something really dense, unless you really like that. Have like something trashy, like <laughs> a guilty pleasure. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be in the mind. I was like trying to read like a training for uh, yeah. work book, and I was like, "This is not. No, this is not, I'm not in the mindset for this. While I'm frozen, no, yeah. no, I needed to like pull out a trashy romance novel or something funny or something light. Yeah, absolutely. I'm so sorry. What was your question? Yeah, what, uh, what's your what do you wish we would add? Oh, the freezer we got afterward. That's one thing. Um, so we, I bought a chest freezer. Is one of the first things I bought. The very first thing I bought when we thawed was a pure sign inverter so we could have run the electric blanket, which I really wanted. Second thing, I, well, and then I built my big solar system, which I have other videos on. And then I got, that was right as COVID was really starting to pick up and chest freezers were out of stock everywhere. This was during the mad rush uh, during that summer. And I caught a chest freezer on Facebook Marketplace and I started stocking up on meat. And then I've done several videos on running a chest freezer on a battery and solar system. They have very low current cons consumption. So very easy to run on a, on a battery or a solar system. Yeah, I wish we had had that because um, that would have kept our food good. Because mm -hmm. um, that was hard too, is that like after everything was said and done, like after we got power back on, um, you know, HEB was out because they hadn't been able to restock. And... <clears throat> it really was a madhouse. I remember driving around that whole mm -hmm. Saturday. I went to Dollar General. I went to Walgreens. Mm -hmm. I tried to go to HEB, but it was just a disaster. Just trying to find some new fresh food. Yeah. I spent a hundred dollars at Dollar General just on on food, just something mm -hmm. different, something new. Yeah, it was hard to have all our food go bad. Um, definitely, like during and after. Mm -hmm. um, I also wish we could have run the electric blanket. We can now. We can now. <laughs> we have like three or four electric blankets now, like <laughs> just to yeah. be on the safe side. <laughs> <laughs> but we have enough power now. I have a thousand watts of solar and 3,600 watt hours of battery. Mm -hmm. And that was the whole point is that I spec'd it, that the solar systems are big enough to run the electric blanket 
and the chest freezer and lights and phones. That's easy, but electric blanket, chest freezer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Check. Yes. And I think that that was something that I had actually asked you to make sure that we could do. Mm -hmm. um, and when you got like, you know, carte blanche to go after whatever solar <laughs> array, battery mm -hmm. array, I was like, we just need it to run. You were like, yes. Like, Let's <laughs> do this. <Yeah. laughs> Let's do this. I think you fell in love with me all over again That's when right. I said that. Um, so, so what are the other su the, the surprising things? I was going to say one more thing yeah. that I wish we would have had, which is a fireplace that was wood burning um, with a lot of wood. And that's something, you know, we don't have a fireplace in our house now and that's, it's fine, but like long-term I would like to end up in a house with a fireplace. It's just something, like I said, with my lizard brain, it just makes me feel a little bit more secure in mm -hmm. my surroundings to have a fireplace. Yeah. yeah. So what were the the things that we had that were a surprise that you liked? Um, I think I was surprised at the capacity of our battery because um, you and I charged our phones a few times off of that. And I don't think we got below like 99 or 98 percent on it. Not hardly. And I was like, I wish I would have been on my phone this whole time. Like I could have just. Yeah. We didn't have Internet <laughs> access hardly at all on the cell phones anyway. But, that's true. Yeah. That's true. Um, and since then, you and I are also like loading up your tablet with some shows that we really like that some are downloaded movies, some yeah. movies. Yeah. Some things that we can watch, um, with, when we don't need internet and you don't have to power an entire laptop mm -hmm. to do it. Yep. It's just on the tablet and mm -hmm. we can watch movies and stuff on my, on my fire tablet. Yeah. So what was, was very weird loaded question. What was the worst part about the blizzard? Oh, everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's awful. Um, the worst part was probably, um, how cold we got by the end of it. Um, the last night I had trouble getting my feet warm when we went to bed and that was really, that was scary. So I think just like not being warm was bad. Um, and there was also the thought of like, you know, we had heard a report or two that like EMS couldn't come out to where we were mm -hmm. because the roads were so icy. And that was kind of scary. Um, and just the, the boredom, mm -hmm. honestly, combined with this like feeling of you're not, not that you're not safe, but kind of that you're not safe, that like you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know when the power is going to come back on. So like this low level fear and anxiety along with the boredom, it was just this like weird concoction. Yeah, I think for me, since I had been watching the weather, I knew that by Saturday it was going to warm up and it was going to, it would be over by the weekend. But those nights, I remember going to bed, sleeping in the bed with my stocking cap on, like sleeping in a jacket under like a pile of blankets a foot high. Mm -hmm. But, and my body was warm, but my face was cold because, you know, the blankets were up to here and I had my stocking cap pulled down. So, this much of me was cold and trying to keep the rest of me warm. Yeah. Um, I think for me, um, the worst part was helplessness. And I kept like going over in my head, like everything I wished I would have done leading up to it. Cause we knew it was coming mm -hmm. and I should have done a better job to prep. Like, you know, blizzard doesn't happen overnight. It's like a hurricane. Like you see it coming. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I should have done this. I should have done this. I should have done this. So I had this like feeling of guilt the whole time on top of being cold. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what was the best? I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, I just want to comment on what you just said um, that, yeah, you, I think that you kind of kicked yourself for a long time after about, you know, what you could have done. But as I told you at the time, and what I'll still say is that we were already a lot better off, you know, than a, a lot, lot of people. people. Yeah. <clears throat> who were in a similar situation and not as prepared as we were. Yeah. We had water, we had food, we had hot water, which was just amazing because we have a gas water heater, mm -hmm. which doesn't require electricity. Mm -hmm. So we lost water pressure for a day, but then it came back. So taking hot showers was amazing. Yeah. 
And what I would say to, you know, people listening is that, you know, if there's something that you've been meaning to get, you just haven't gotten it, you know, this might be your sign to go ahead and get it. Because if you get into that situation, you're going to be kicking yourself like, shit, I should have just, I should have just done it. At the same time, there's no way to prepare for every eventuality and mm. you've just got to let it go that there's just going to be some things that are just out of your hands that you didn't think of and we just learn and we move on. And we're much better off now, you know, with all the stuff that I've done in the last two years. Mm -hmm. It's another video I have, the 18 months of prepping. Um, it's all the crap that I bought and planned for and prepared for waiting for the next blizzard because I know it's going to come. Um, so if it happens again, be in better shape mm -hmm. so what was the best part of the blizzard <laughs> the best part of the blizzard was when our cat george went out and played in the snow <laughs> that was pretty good <laughs> and then the maybe burrito he like can i just say though that he, he like didn't realize how deep it was <laughs> and he jumped off of our porch <laughs> and just like disappeared <laughs> <laughs> His nose was like a foot deep in the backyard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we've got a video of that. That was great. That was really nice. The cats were really nice for morale because mm -hmm. they would come, they were just as upset as we were. And, you know, it was funny to see them also grumpy about it. And they would snuggle with us. You know, they wanted to be on top of us basically at all times. Under the more, covers. Under the covers. Um, and just you and I just, you know, we were in it together. Like mm -hmm. we were not arguing. We were not bickering. We weren't upset with each other. We weren't taking it out on each other. We were like, let's get through this together. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other final thoughts for everybody? Um, part of a complete prepper survivalist setup is having comfort food. <laughs> I cannot stress that Snickers. enough. And things to do and the power's out. Lots of things to do. Like we needed about four days worth of things to do. Um, and <clears throat> I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Just that I'm really grateful to be married to a prepper and really enjoy, you know, how much better this has and much easier has this has made our lives. We have a visitor. Oh, hi. Oh, pick oh. speak there's, of the devil. There's Prepper George. This is Prepper George. He's the one who jumped in the snow and didn't realize how deep it was. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thanks for joining us, Prepper Wife. Thank so, you for having me. Um, Please give me a thumbs up and a subscribe. We've got a whole year's worth of stuff upcoming. So uh, I hope that uh, you enjoyed this and gave you some ideas and some perspective. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye, y'all.